On November 15th, 2018, three people went into work at Millennium Cryogenic Technologies in Leduc, Alberta, Canada. The company used liquid nitrogen coolers to service oil field equipment. At around 2 p.m., 911 arrived in response to an emergency call. All three men were dead. How exactly did this happen? Nitrogen is an inert gas. It isn't flammable, it doesn't react with other substances, and it isn't toxic. Nearly 80% of the air we breathe is nitrogen. Industries often use nitrogen in its liquid state as a cryogenic. Cryogenics are liquefied gases that are kept at extremely low temperatures. Cryogenics are used frequently as rocket propellants, they're used in refrigeration, and in many manufacturing processes. But they carry some serious risks. One of the biggest ones, especially when working indoors, is oxygen displacement. Liquid nitrogen has an expansion ratio of 696 to 1, meaning one liter of liquid, when boiled to a gas, will expand to 696 liters at standard room conditions. Thus, a relatively small container of liquid can completely displace the oxygen in a much larger room if it were to leak out. With each breath in an oxygen-depleted environment, oxygen gets displaced from your lungs, and it can only take a few breaths for a person to lose all of their stored oxygen and pass out. At MCT, liquid nitrogen was used to freeze pipes so that the rubber lining on them would become brittle and could be more easily removed. A liquid nitrogen storage tank was located outside the facility that connected to coolers inside. The two main coolers each had exhaust ducts that discharged the nitrogen outside, a transfer duct to transfer nitrogen between the coolers, and air lines that would purge the nitrogen, either to the other cooler or to outside. That morning, preparation was made to unload pipes from both coolers, which had been left overnight to freeze. After turning off Cooler 1, the transfer duct gates were opened and the nitrogen in Cooler 1 was purged into Cooler 2. The pipes were removed and new pipes were loaded in. The same process took place for Cooler 2. Cooler 2 was then turned on while Cooler 1 was still set to off. However, the transfer duct gates remained open, allowing nitrogen to flow into both coolers. At around 1.30 p.m., Worker 1 went in to remove the pipe from Cooler 1, which was still turned off. The cooler was still cold from having been used earlier that day, and thus the additional nitrogen was not noticeable to the crew. As Worker 1 worked to wrap the lifting slings around the pipe, he quickly became unresponsive. The supervisor, having become aware of this, entered the bay and also climbed into the cooler, with the fog from the nitrogen making it impossible to see inside. As he entered, he called loudly for Worker 2. Worker 2 then ran to the cooler and also climbed in, his vision also obstructed by the fog. A few minutes later, when Worker 3 did not hear any activity, he also went in and began climbing inside. However, he started feeling lightheaded and rapidly exited the cooler. The owner was then notified and 911 was called. The owner turned off Cooler 2, closed the transfer ducts, and turned on the air compressor. Medical workers quickly arrived on the scene, but unfortunately found all three workers already dead from nitrogen asphyxiation. Millennium Cryogenic Technologies was charged with the failure of ensuring the health and safety of their workers, failure to ensure proper supervision, and failure to ensure training and the identification of hazards while working in a confined space. They were fined a total of $500,000. None of the workers had the proper training or equipment for working in confined spaces. Cold nitrogen gas is much heavier than air. As Cooler 1 was being inadvertently filled, the nitrogen quickly displaced any air inside. When the lid was open, the heavier nitrogen remained pooled in the container, creating an environment with basically zero oxygen. The company had two personal oxygen monitors, neither of which were in use at the time of the incident. No emergency alarms or shutoff controls were installed. The ducting system allowed for inadvertent transfer of nitrogen between both coolers. No controls were put in place to prevent the opening of the coolers before they were purged, to lift the pipes without the need to have the workers climb inside. No ventilation was installed in the room, and the list goes on. Accidents involving nitrogen are extremely rare. This unfortunate case is an example that anything can happen when you try and take shortcuts and compromise worker safety for the sake of money. If you'd like to see more of these investigative type videos, let me know down in the comments below. Thank you all for watching. My name is Wee Sam, and I'll see you next time.